Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and here we're going to do our paint along. And here's what I just, oh, which way am I pointing? This way. <laughs> here's what I just did this afternoon, and um, <laughs> I'm not that happy with it. Uh, it's kind of cartoony, and so like again, anybody who's new here, I usually do a uh, paint along every Thursday night, and so usually in class, I have a class afternoon in the afternoons in Libertyville, Illinois, and um, I do this paint along first and we kind of work on it and see what we can do and use the first time I worked with it as you can see I did I, can't quite remember, but <laughs> I did um, uh, this one with the stencil in the background and I just felt it was a little bit too cartoony it's kind of like a cartoon and maybe that's to do with the colors a little bit but um, so we'll see we're gonna maybe change it up a little bit and we'll see why we're doing it and if you like this one that's fine um, I'll show you how I did that one how I did that one and so anybody new here, here's my website, um, beckerart.net or davidartbecker.com, either one. And um, there's where you find out everything that happens um, when I'm doing whatever I'm doing. <laughs> so just go there and even you find my you find my newsletter, sign up there, you find everything there. And um, the supplies we're using today will be the Holbein watercolors, of course. And we have, I actually used some transfer paper today because I was, um, I had to take somebody to oh, here today, <laughs> right after my class. And so I had to hurry up and get back here and do this um, do this paint along. And so there are my brushes, Stonehenge paper, of course, we're using. We're not using any mask oil today. And so let's go to our value study. And so our value study here, we are, um, I put a little filter on it. And still the colors are very cartoonish. And the background, I know, is green. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to we're gonna make it a little bit more. I'm going to downplay the colors just a little bit. I just felt that they're too vibrant um, for my taste. I mean, you go ahead if you wanted to make it that colorful and make it like, because these birds are colorful, these macaws, they're very colorful. So go ahead and do that. You can put them in any color you'd like. Um, I changed the background to not a green again, because you know I don't like green, but watch out next week. I've got a special surprise for you guys. <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell you about that until later. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to, where's my pointer, oh here it is. Uh, hold on one second, let me get the pointer to the top. And so the pointer, and so again, the first and most important thing is always a drawing. Of course, now we got the drawing down, and if you copy it, that's fine. And then if you look for your lights and darks, and it's kind of interesting because the dark on this side and the dark on this side of the animal is perfectly for like a yin-yang type of composition. See how it goes on this side, and then we have this side. So you're basically your light goes through here, and then, so as long as we keep that, and I'm gonna keep down the colors, I think we should be pretty good. I will also be using a stencil to make more of these round shapes instead of what I had done as I made the background look more like foliage. And so either um, I'm gonna make it more round dots, just because I kinda like that. And so we're gonna try that. We're gonna get, try to keep a little bit more light um, in this one compared to the one I did this afternoon. So let's go to our tabletop and take a look again. So let me just show you really one more time about what I did here. So here's what I had done. And um, a lot of stuff in here, and I kind of lost my pattern of light and dark. This is light, but up here it probably should have been a little bit lighter, and then it went down through here. And I mean, again, it's okay and it's fine, but I would like to get that. If you look over here, I mean, this is really bright, and I kind of want to maybe keep the white of the paper, and then keep some of the white of the paper also in the in the edge of the parrot or macaw, and maybe in his face, and then not so cartoonish with the feathers and make some more um, soft edges edges that are lost it's very important to keep some lost edges so not everything's hard edged and that way your eye has a place to rest and so i'm going to do like this area right here to be more soft edged and not so detailed and same thing in this down here uh, maybe in the background too because the background if you look right here the background is all blurry and here it's not and so that's this is kind of defeating the purpose of trying to keep your eye away from back there and make it look like it's going backwards. So a little bit of, you know, um, uh, the, the wrong thing this afternoon, <laughs> but we'll see what we can do this afternoon or this evening. And so let's see who's all here today. And um, hello, Barbara, Monica, Pamela, Sue, Tina, Marianne. Thanks for showing up tonight. Or to, yes, tonight <laughs> I don't have a beer. I have, it's so hot in here, and actually I gotta turn off, I forgot to turn off my thing because it's kind of loud, isn't it? Let me turn off the air conditioning. There, now you can actually hear me. Look at how light, how loud it got. See how loud that is? And so, good thing I remembered that. So today we have a whizzy. 
<laughs> um, a lemon, um, a raspberry lemonade hard seltzer. So we're gonna do that because it is so hot in here again. <laughs> I just got back here in time to do the thing, and I had to drop some, have to drop my cousin's daughter off at the airport to go to Germany. And so, cheers, everybody. That's um, not a beer, a lemonade seltzer, but it'll keep me cool. And we'll taste it, and I'm sure I'll be fine because it's gonna taste great because I'm getting so hot. <laughs> Cheers, everybody! Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's gonna keep me cool down. Again, though, we should be drinking this on a beach. <laughs> so, all right. So let's get down to our painting. Let's get down to the painting. Where are we here? Okay, let's go on our painting. Hi, David. Love the bird. I remember you helping me with a parrot watercolor at Palette and Chisel. You reminded me that this type of painting is a type of portrait. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a very good... I'm, I told you that? That's great. <laughs> also, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, let's, um, let's make this a portrait. Bokeh. Bokeh is the technique in photography that makes the round lights. Oh, thanks, Sue. So, we're going to do round lights. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a stencil like this. And let me get this picture out of the way here just for a second. And we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna take a stencil. Uh, I made the stencil right before we get on, and I'm gonna make these, and I'll show you how I'm gonna use it as a stencil. And uh, very simple. All right, so let's get going here. And again, I'm not gonna use as bright a colors this time. And I'm going to start with my lights, and go right into my darks. And I'm just gonna go right through the whole thing because I know my lights and dark pattern right away. I probably should have put the black and white here instead of this color one, so you can always see what it is and that so you don't get influenced by the color. Sometimes by having this one here, you get influenced by the color. So I suggest a lot of times if you're starting out in watercolor and if you don't want to just constantly use the color of the photo, make a black and white of it and just use the black and white and then learn about the colors that you want to put in there. So I'm going to, I'm still going to make the bird blue and everything and I just don't think a bright yellow. It looks kind of candy-like, the yellow. And I know that's the what color of the bird, but I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Yellow is a very, very powerful color. So I'm going to make it more... And it's, again, it's always up to you what you want to do. And here, I'm not pre-wetting it. I'm wetting as it go along. So I'm just going to kind of put it in there. I'm going more for a... Um, more of a flesh tone. <laughs> and again... All up to you. If you want to make it look as yellow and as like that, that's fine. Um, it'll look, I think, to me, it looked more cartoony. And I'm not sure that's a bad thing. Um, it's pr probably not. Um, but I just want to make it more not so colorful. Okay. <laughs> and that's just my choice. Um, because I already done it. And again, take a look. I already did that in this, this thing right here. So that's um, very yellow and orange. And so I want to keep it. A little bit more and then down, downplay the colors a little bit. And actually the class did a great job today. Um, they did uh, really nice stuff. And so I saw a couple of people in class had done it not so vibrant and did some really nice color backgrounds. And so I thought that's it. And actually one person even did in a um, monotone kind of colors. And so that's good too. You know, don't be afraid of, you don't have to make everything a rainbow. Even though these birds sometimes are as colorful as a rainbow. And this one has actually green in the hair up here and stuff and you can put all that else still in there and there's the lights and then i'll go down here and again ask questions anybody who wants to ask questions so the chat the chat disconnected and it looks like it says here hopefully it's back up again because i definitely want you guys to chat <laughs> we don't want not chatting we love chatting Chat, chat, chat away. I'm going to put a little violet in this yellow. It's a gray it up a little bit again because um, I don't want it that vibrant. And already to me, I feel already that this is better. Just, it's just, it's, you know, when you have great colors, it makes the bright colors look that much more vibrant when you're doing the bright colors. And so bring a little bit down on this side. And it's okay to get hard edges on this. You know, I, I didn't wet it first. So inside I'm getting, you know, I'm getting soft edges. And I'll then identify the shape of the feathers as I go along. And I'll put some a little bit darker with hard edges. And I'll do that later. And here on the edge, I'll do that. Now the background, I'm going to make kind of grayish. I can, 
make it a bluish green if anything i can make it a blue green like this type of thing more grayish and so i'm gonna do that because i do like the blue and boy's getting hot in here again <laughs> cheers everybody cheers 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 i'm gonna need about two cans of this stuff as <laughs> lemonade <laughs> Uh, let's see so we're gonna go in here make this a little bit and I'm I'm actually gonna make some circles I think just with my brush I'm just gonna see if I can't do that type of thing and go right over the beak the beak is darker and maybe I want these soft edge right and so I'm just gonna go in here and soften the edge and make it a circle I don't want any hard edges in the background I kind of keep it soft and as I go up I'm just gonna wet it as I go along and a lot of times, you know, when I'm doing backgrounds, I go all the way around or I go and I wet everything around it. But here I can do it as I go along. And as I get towards this area, it's going to get really dark. And so that'll give me a chance to just um, do soft edges, do it real lightly here. Give me a little blue, bluish green. Give me a little compose, compose blue green, not compost. <laughs> and so we're going to go in here. And I'm going to make this darker than it should be because I'm going to use that stencil to bring back my white. And so I actually kind of want to make it a little bit darker than it is in the photo. And anyways, remember that our, um, that our watercolor usually dries about 20% darker or lighter. I mean, lighter on a white paper. So we're going to go in here. You can lift the paint in circles to achieve the effect. Yep, you can. You can. You can definitely lift the. Um, you can just take take out your brush and just circle like this with water, and you can also get a little white circle. But um, I'll show you how I did it with the um, stencil. The stencil is so super easy, and you don't have to worry about when you're doing this part. Now you just go ahead and get in there and have fun with it. This is getting a little bit too vibrant again. I don't. I'm trying to keep it down the vibrancy, only because um, the bird itself too. I'm going to try to keep it down a little bit. And that's just my, again, that's my taste. I feel like I just want to make it more grayer and not as cartoonish. And I'm not sure that's even a word, cartoonish. <laughs> Cartoony. And so I'm waiting as you go along. I'm even gonna put a little black in this, in this, to this blue. Oh, that's light. Oh, what am I doing? Let's pick that out of there. See, I could do a circle like this too. But I'm not going to do that. I want to show you how to do it with the um, with the stencil. It's a fun thing with the stencil. I actually enjoy doing the stencil. That's how I'm waiting, um, and it looks really cool at the end when you do it with the with the stencil. It kind of looks like the same effect. And as I get over here, I'm going to get really dark right away. I'm going to get really dark with a bluish green. Just as dark as almost that you see there. I'm gonna do the. I'm cutting back and doing the negative painting of the of the parrot, the uh, macaw. I see. I'm going back and forth into it, leaving the negative being the f the feathers, and then here I'll add water to that, and then I put a little green, yellow on top of that, so that'll be. I just wanted to make this kind of dark. I'm turning in late, David, but I am knowledgeable of the blue and gold macaw, and those are the colors they are. Not dull, but very vibrant colors on this bird. Yep, I figured. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. They're very, and I actually, I saw a couple of birds like this with red on them, too. So you have every primary color on there. And so I want to give it a little bit more. I'm going to tone down a little bit. You can, like I said, you can do it. I already did that that one i'm gonna try it this way just to see how it works um it's always good to experiment try different things you know and see what you like best um it's all it's about you know i want to maybe dull down these colors and that way my blues and um even though i put them less they'll still be bright depending on how much gray i have in here so i'm just going to try something new here something a little bit different And I, like, you know me, and I don't follow the colors like to a T a lot of times with the actual picture, but it is nice. I think you're, yeah, I'm, I'm actually sure that I've seen birds that that's, that's how bright their feathers are. And, um, definitely do it if you want them that bright. And I already, like I said, I already did this afternoon and it was, 
it was fun. I just felt that one, I made too bright, some colors in the background too. And so we'll go in here now and right away, go right into the head. Cause I want to have a little bit of this soft edge. I'm going to keep a little bit of this white. I'm going to wet the head here right away. Cause I already got my lights. This is my lights now, right? My lights are done. And now I go right into my darks. And I keep this very simple back here. In class today, I also spatter and other things go down. And so I got really wild with it this afternoon. So this time we're being a little bit more careful. Uh, Lynn says, love that you're doing a bird. I always appreciate the variety. Yep, um, we always try to get variety. That's one thing. It's no fun doing things over and over again. But um, if you do want to learn something, though, one thing you want to do is do it over and over again, though. If you do want to learn like to do these kind of birds, don't just do one like um, tonight and then never do them again. Just if you really like a certain subject matter, you know, do it many, many times. But for my paint alongs, I try to get a little bit of everything. And so here I'm going around with the green first, greenish blue, and then we're going to go right into a blue. And I'm painting again a lot as I'm going along. And um, I call this painting wetting as you go along. Um, I'm using the hard edge where I want the hard edges, but then I wet it and then I manipulate it to where I want it to be dark and light and and that way I'm not wetting this whole thing so by the time I get over here it's gonna be too dry anyway so I'm going in here now getting whatever I have to get done now and so then I have to go back into that area again and I'm trying to get the soft edges first and I'm into my darks now right I'm cool. already doing my darks and so we're gonna go in here with a nice bright color blue and we will do some blues I mean we're gonna do some bright colors too now this is on a dry surface, so you can see it's not floating, but then I'll put colors in there right after that. And I'll bring this down right around his eye. And the darks create the objects and shapes, right? So you always remember that. It's like um, the darks are after you put the lights in, then you do your darks. And darks create shapes and objects. So let's go in here and I'm gonna let some of this bleed into the background. And then his right here is almost like his um, cheek right here turns yellow. And so I can, I can also wet that area and make some of that right away soft edge like it's feathered. You can just put some water in there and so it looks a little feathered. And the actual feathers themselves, like the ones that I'm going to make it look, I'm going to negative paint some of the feathers. So I'll put a dark in there later. Some I can do now, but um, a lot of it I'll do later. Um, I'm just getting a really dark dark so around his eyes. There's a really dark dark and I want those to be soft edge because that way it'll just bleed and look very feathery, right? Feathery is soft edged. And so to get soft edges, how do you do that in watercolor? You know, you need to put water and let the, let the pigment do its own softening. The water softens the pigment. You don't have to blend it or anything like that. You just wet it and let it go in there. And I'm gonna put some yellow in there too, right away up on top here. Just let, you know, work it until you got it to where you want it. And don't move that to that area. Don't move out of that area until you get what you want. A little more green in there, a little blue. And it goes right away to a, kind of comes down here. It gets kind of dark. And it gets kind of furry. Furry, not furry, feathery. Feathery and furry, two different things, I think. <laughs> More cheers we get we gotta keep cool here <laughs> oh that's good we should be on a beach painting this <laughs> and we're gonna go down here now get a little bit farther i hope everybody had a nice fourth of july and um i'm going down here with the blue I'm gonna just take it out and again these are all dry now this yellow is dry so you may get all hard edges here but later on what I'm gonna to try to do is maybe get a little bit of the soft edges by adding water to it as I go down just let it bleed into the yellow a little bit and I don't got this is like the middle tone right it's not the darkest dark yet here though it looks like it gets really dark right there so I'm adding a little bit of dark blue with black into this dark um, blue that I have like the edge of the Very simple for all the beginners. Remember, you don't soften an edge. You let the edge soften itself by adding water. It will automatically become soft by how much water and pigment you have in, in your brush and on the paper. 
Uh, let's see. Should I, I'll wait for the, the face and I'll just do this big area. I would like to do the bigger areas first. And so here I will wet a little bit beyond and I'll just take this in through here. going to wet it just with my dirty water. I know where I'm going here. Just going to bring this down. I'm kind of using my round brush a lot on this one. I'm not sure if that's why, but, um, usually I use the big one, but this is kind of nice because it almost feels like a feather, like the shape of a feather too. So now I'll go in here and I will make this side is the lighter side. So I will make that lighter. I'll give that light blue. And as I come around this way, I'm gonna make it darker. So it goes from light to dark, light to dark. And then um, there is a really dark area here and here, which I will do later, but I can put a little bit of that in there now, just so that um, it leaves a little bit of the yellow showing. And then I'm just gonna make that and then we're going to go again from light to dark using a little horizon blue. And I'm not really trying to make the shape of the feathers right now. I will do that with a negative painting by putting the dark around it. Like we learned last week. Remember, I hope you remember last week with negative painting because that's what you're doing now. Kind of extension of that. And we're going to just make this darker as we come over here. And I use peacock blue for the really bright blue. Look at how bright a blue that is. It's almost a fake blue, but um, it's very, very bright peacock blue. And, it, you know, peacock being a bird, peacock blue, you have to use peacock blue, right? <laughs> so here we go. And I am sweating up a storm here, guys. <laughs> it's like a 90 some degrees outside today again. And here we go. Again, I'm not doing individual feathers. I'm, I'm kind of losing my lines in here, so I may have to go back in there and draw them in or just fake them. To, to, I think they'll come through. I think they'll come through afterwards. And so this, there's the one right here. It's a little bit darker, so I'm taking a nice dark Prussian blue here. Nice dark. And I'm going to go around a little bit around. This is going to be a soft edge feather, which is cool. And see what you do is you do the outer edge you know, of the feather. You kind of go around and it gives it the shadow from one layer and on top of another layer and that's negative painting because this one you're actually doing kind of a line you know around it and it gets a little bit lighter and just remember don't get it too dark this way let it be dark here and then i'll go back in and get it sharp edges right now it's all soft because it's all wet any more questions guys please ask questions i love questions or suggestions or anything. Anything you want to talk about. And here's his chest. We'll make it real nice. All right, we'll let that dry. And now let's go right into our face. And actually, we can do some... Yeah, I'll do the shadows of the of the light parts in a second. I'm going to go in. I'm getting antsy to do the, do the darks in the face. <laughs> I'm going to do the beak. And so the beak, I will take piece by piece. I'll take the top beak. I'll wet it. I'll wet it with a dirty color here and um, I'm using my round brush with a nice flat tip. I found it again. And so these new ones, boy, they have a, they have like a one neat, one hair brush at the end of these rounds. Okay. So there's, I wet it, right? And so now I wet it and I can wet the bottom one too. And then I, I form it. I form it while it's all wet because it will soften itself. It gives itself an edge. I'm going to keep a little white here. Leave that white. And now it's wet with a color. And um, I'm going to now form it by using darks in some spots and light in other spots by using a lot of pigment. So if I use a really dark dark and I want to do that underneath, right? I would want to do that like under, underneath here. So let's do a real dark right there. Let that bleed up into there. You can push it a little bit. The side of him looks like the side right here is really dark. I don't leave this little white there. I can always darken that later, but I can't lighten it up if I go over it. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it light, and I'm just going to kind of go in here and let these things all bleed together. Let them all be soft edges, and then um, and then I, I think to myself, okay, there are other colors. This is reflecting into that. The yellow is reflecting into that. So those colors reflect. And so I will put a little bit of this um, reflection into this bottom part right there. I will put a little bit of that blue, the horizon blue. I'll just let, it's wet. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on the bottom. 
And same thing with the top. The sky is a little blue up here, so I'm going to make it a little bit nice and light. Let it reflect into the beak. I can even put a little white or something really bright. Like a bright white blue. Right now, like there's a like it's wet even. I could be to do that too. Now that's a little bit too bright, and so I'm gonna tone it down with a little bit of the black. And again, don't be afraid to use black when you need to get a really dark dark. It just really um, you can make it colorful afterwards. You don't have to be worried that it's gonna be a dull black. It'll be fine. What you're gonna do then is um, put a color into that. Put a little yellow in that tip right here and then yellow at the tip of this just so that it kind of matches the ah right into this yeah watch out for that uh <laughs> quickly quickly paper towel paper towel there we go we gotta dab that out of there real quick and really quickly go back in with the same exact value same exact amount of pigment and then just put it in there there we go all right, so there's the beak, and through the beak we have to do his chin right here. There's a lot of little things going on here with the chin, so let me put this up a little bit here. And so it's the same thing, dark, same kind of colors I used in the beak. And so it goes down from the beak and kind of comes around here. And there's a lot of little feathers in here that just go back and forth. And then it goes up into this area. And then there's another thing that goes up in this area. And I'm using the very tip of my brush to get that, using that, the very, you know, a feathery part of my brush that's very, very thin. And these are all just feathers. You gotta remember, the feathers are all sticking out and layered on top of each other. So that's all you gotta do is make sure that they look like they're layered, like there's one on top of another. And that's definitely negative painting. And we learned that last week. We learned how to do one with something that's underneath and something that's on top. So the first, these white parts are on the top of the um, feather, and then underneath would be the dark. So you just go underneath and do the dark, and leave some of it for the white. And then wet, when it's wet, then finally when it's wet, add some color into it. Because that's when you're floating your pigment right into, into the dark, and right into the watery area. This, now I'm going to do a little bit more orange here, because there's going to be a little bit more of this. Um, I'm using Jean number number two for my kind of yellowish pink flesh tone kind of thing and see how it's a little bit duller than I had normally had done but um, and then I'm gonna use my number eight round this is number eight round here's number eight round oh spattered and actually I can spatter later too because it's kind of fun to spatter you know me and spattering Hey Liz, hey Cindy, and so we're going to go in here and take a nice dark dark and it goes right around here. It's almost like he has a little bit of a, a mask or, or you can identify his cheeks and what I'm doing is I'm going around here and just making each little brush stroke a feather. It seems going right there. And this itself, this white, is I'm going to go over that in a second with a light tint of a wash. And there's his nostril. And then I might as well put all these little things in there right now, too. What the heck? I'm just going to put these little dots in that are just markings on the bird. And I'm just going right over what I penciled. You know, just, just go right over it. I mean, I penciled it so that it looks like what it is. And so just go right over it. And then the, the wash, I'm gonna put a wash over that, real light wash over that, just to darken it up a little bit. But for now, we can keep it nice and, um, we can keep it nice and white, it's fine. I'm still gonna go in here and get some darker um, inside these little areas. So we can get some of that, because again, underneath each feather, the next feather underneath is dark. And it identifies, it would be right underneath the light part, because the light part is the part that's farthest out, and then you just make these little reflections of, of feathers. I'm going to do his dot in his eye real quick. He's going to use black. You know, that just use solid black and just, it's okay because the pupil is pretty much solid black. And I'm going to do his eye, eyeliner. 
And I'm gonna put <laughs> gonna do that, okay. And then we're gonna make this a little bit darker in here too. We can do, and again, I was telling the class too, depending on how much you wanna work with the feathers, I mean, you can make this photographic. You can do every single little bit of feather in there if you would like. But you gotta start it this way and then work your tighter as tighter as you go along. And so even these are feathers, but they're very light feathers. And I'm going to use a little bit of that. Let's use a little bit of um, lavender. So I don't want it to be um, yellow. I just want it to be white, but a, a reflection of white. And these are all feathers. If you look really close to the picture, there's little feathers in here. There is no like flesh. It's all feathers. And so people were making it look a little bit like you, you know, it's flesh. No, it is, everything on the bird is feathers. So it doesn't matter how tight they are, but it's feathers. It's not still got a little bit big. Oh, well. <laughs> and he's got big nostrils. This is a big nostril bird. And I'm going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of, I'm just putting little feathers in now. Just a little brushwork. It, again, it's um, feathers have a dark side and a light side underneath. So now when we go down to here, let's do our darks. And there is a little bit of dark right along the inside of his wing. Uh, it seems like there's a, like this is his wing, but then in the back here, there's like another wing or uh, another wing or part of his wing that's in the back here. It's really dark. It must turn over or something right there. And so I'm gonna do that really dark and hard edged. You know, I can make that hard edged. I was going to soften some of this, but I can probably still do that later on because there's going to be something dark here, so I can go in there, wet that, and, and get that darkened again. I will also, when this is dry, put a little a tint over that to darken underneath the eyes. 7 o'clock. We're going fast here, guys. Ask some questions. Hello, late, better late than never. Yes, thanks, Liz. How are you keeping that blue and yellow from turning green? Um, I'm just doing, not doing anything on top of it, um, when it's, um, Tina, I'm just taking the yellow, I did that and I was dried it and then I just did the blue on top of that. And it is a little green, it's kind of a bluish green anyway, so it's not going to mix, it didn't mix together because I didn't put any of that into the uh, blue. And if, like you said, if you do get a little bit of green, that's fine. You get a little bit of green. Now I'm going to negative paint this part of the neck, you know, like it's like right there and just going to paint that in there. And then I'm going to take this a um, little bit deeper peacock blue and a little bit of little bit of the ultramarine. And I'm just going to go in here. And these feathers back here are squished together. They're kind of, if you look at the picture really closely, they're kind of squished together and then they kind of come out. And I like to, what I like to do is um, pick a side of the, um, of the feather, like maybe the left side could be more, a little bit more dark than the right side because the light's coming this way so when you have a line right there the left side make that a little bit darker and then bring it up and then there's also like leaves they have a little center um the little center line i just noticed that and so you're just going to kind of always make the left side a little bit thicker and a little bit wider and then you put a line down the center almost like the vein in a leaf it's kind of like it has the veins in there too a little bit less here. And if you have a, a good drawing, you don't have to guess at this. Like I'm guessing right now, you just go right over your, right over your um, feathers the way you drew them. I kind of um, made them too light and so I lost them a little bit. So I'm kind of making them up as I go along here now, which is also okay. I mean, I might not be picture perfect, but it'll be fine. I'm doing the bottom part. See, I'm just going to, and I will also soften these edges a little bit too in there. I'm just getting them right now to make them look um, like they're negative painted. Basically is what I'm doing right now. And I will make this area a little bit darker later on. And there's a line here. Again, the left side I'm doing hard edge. And you notice these are all hard edge because I didn't wet it, right? And so you're getting the look of the feathers. And if you want to make it look really Autobahn like, then you're going to have to go in there with a lot of brushwork and with your rigger brush and really go in there and like pull back and get all those little feathers in there. Like, because every feather, man, has how many little hairs, you know? Um, so you can do that too. 
And um, it all depends on, again, how tight you get with your work. I don't teach a style, I teach fundamentals of watercolor. And so you get to a certain point and then you decide yourself how detailed you like, how, um, you know, how have you been taught before. A lot of teachers that you taught you before, you're going to be influenced by them. And um, that's a good thing. You know, every teacher you take, you should take something away from that teacher and then try to establish it into your work a little bit. If not, th nothing, that's fine too. Just something to just think about when you're working that it doesn't have to be like the teachers, but you're always gonna be influenced by the teachers. So you're being influenced by me about how to do, you know, probably looser than tighter. Like if you take a really tight person, that person gets you a little bit tighter with it. And so now I'm gonna take a little bit flatter brush and I'm gonna wet on the side and make it soft edged on the, on the left side here. So that not all these are hard edged and I'm just gonna wet them a little bit. And I keep the side that's um, against the light part of the feather. I keep that hard edged, and then I let it go into the into the feather itself, soft edged. All right. Um, while this is while I'm in this corner, this is way too vibrant here and too bright and too light. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet it with clear water. Let's just wet this area with clear water. I'm going to go right into this, into the feathers, into the bird himself, too. Because I want this to be like that. I want it to be really dark. And I want it to be um, sort of where it's just bleeding into the background. And I don't want a too hard an edge here. I just want it to feel like it's part of the background. And I will even put, probably put a circle in there somehow later, too. I just want it to be soft-edged and bleed it into the bird here. I don't want to be able to see what's going on here. I'm just going to let that bleed in there. That's called lost edges. Soft lost edges. And not enough of those in art. And when it comes to a lot of the people who are doing really high definition stuff, you know, get some edges lost. Let them just be lost. Let them bleed away into nothingness. <laughs> and so I'm just going to bleed this up here a little bit. Now, the water is pretty dirty, so I can't get a super, super clean wash up here. That's why you usually have two cups of water. And I also use my spritzer. Maybe that'll help because it's clear water. There we go. And so then I don't have to worry about it. I'll just take that into the spritzer. All right. And I'm also going to put a little... See how it's just lost now? It doesn't need to be something everywhere. Now let's do our, our kind of boring chest of the bird because that's very... You know, I can do some parts a little bit more orange and I will get some more of the feathers in there and put some more of the darker parts in there. And so I can just make it a little bit darker. I don't want to make it super, super dark and I don't want to make it super bright. I did that already this afternoon. And so now we're just going to go in there and um, make the dark underneath the, underneath the um, feathers. This is underneath the neck part, right? So see how it like already comes out and gives you a little bit of a shadow. Then there's some more here. I'm just gonna bleed that inward. So that again, underneath the feathers, some of the feathers. And this back here, I'm gonna bleed into the background again because why? I wanna lose the edge. Losing edges, like I said, is a good thing. Not all edges have to be hard edges because when you make a hard edge, it identifies a shape. And a lot of times you don't wanna have to look at every shape and everything that you're doing. It's nice to have a little bit of um, where your eye can relax and just bleed into the background and not have to worry about what it, that is. Not everything has to be identified in your painting. Matter of fact, the less the better and just leave your center of interest. Leave your center of interest, the part that's most important. And see, now I got dark. Then the, the edge of that is like the rocks. When we did rocks, it's like underneath here, underneath this part, it's coming forward, right? And then that's dark underneath. Then it gets to light again. And you can make this a soft edge right here. You can go again and again and again and again and again. And just because they're all layered. It's every one of these feathers is layered on top of another one. And so now we're going to keep on going down. And let's do a little bit bigger brush. Where's my, I'm going to take my flat brush down here because it, like his chest is light. And then down here, it gets dark again. And so I'm taking basically orange and yellow. I'm going to put that down here. 
And then there's even a part that's even darker yet, so I'm going to leave that alone until later. Put that in here. Um, pretty bird, pretty bird, pretty bird. Pretty bird. <laughs> All right, Cindy, let's, let's cheers again. <laughs> Can you see I'm sweating like a, like a hog here? <laughs> cheers, everybody, cheers. Boy, that's going to be gone in no time. <laughs> All right, throw that down there. And by the way, that's a, like a, that's a good... That's a good nine seltzer, um, hard seltzer. It's actually very good, busy, busy. For a hard seltzer. And again, it's not beer tonight. We didn't have beer tonight. I didn't have time to go over to the place and get a uh, beer, so. Here we gotta go up. And then we're gonna get a little bit darker yet. Maybe a little bit darker, a little bit more orange. Put that in here. And I can make some edges. Remember how to make edges? Just make thick, thick pigment. Thick pigment makes harder edges in wet surfaces. See, this is a wet surface, but look at I can use pure pigment and I can make an edge. I can make a negative painted soft edge, but still an edge. And um, making it an edge by having it soft though. Not every edge has to be hard that's negative painted. Some of it can be soft edged. I'll put a little bit of that in here. Edge on the side here a little bit. And see, I'm letting that bleed and not, um, I'm not identifying this with hard edges because I wanted this time to just bleed off of there. And actually, this should go farther out. And um, so I'm going to show you that I'm going to cheat and I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to rub this out. Well, maybe I will try to rub it out. And then I'm going to put white and yellow there so that I'm just going to tap it with a opaque color. Just going to clean up my white. That's how I clean my white. I just tape it up like that. And then we go for white and yellow. And I make it nice and thick, almost like um, gouache. And so I'm just going to go in here and then just, it's still wet. And so it will feel, it will feel like a watercolor because it's floating. I'm just going to put that little bit of light in there. And so, you know, um, it's just another way of getting a light inside your, inside your watercolor that you may have made too dark, but as long as it's wet and even if it's a hard edge, you know, don't be so afraid to do that. It's, it's okay. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. No watercolor police are going to come in. And so let's see. Now this I think is dry. Nope, not yet. Let me let that dry a little bit because we want a little bit of shadow underneath his nose, underneath his eye there. And then we also want to get a little bit more up here for for some feathers. And then let's see, he's got feathers in the back of his head here that kind of like go in there. Again, negative painting them. Negative paint the dark around the one that's there in front. And I think we're almost ready for the stencil, guys. So stencils, um, like I said, I had done this other one before, and I did this one right here. And if you look at this stencil, this is a stencil that where this dark part is the is the part of the stencil, and I rub out this light area right here. See how I rubbed out this light area over here? I this area that's light, of course, is the part that's a stencil now, and now I rub into that some of this dirty sponge, and I put it into this side. And that's how I got this to be darker over here, which I shouldn't have made darker because that's part of my light source that should have been light. <laughs> so it ended up being a little bit too dark, um, but it does give you a feel like it is um, like foliage in the background. I was looking more for a design element, like maybe circles, because the circles on this one, though, the circles is kind of like what the camera does. And what did um, Stu say is um, bokeh? I'm not sure that's how you spell it or um, pronounce it. And so that's um, what the photography, how to make the round circles, it's technique, she says. Sue says that. <laughs> so I believe Sue. I believe so, what she says. Hey, Barbie. Um, no problem. You're here. <laughs> and so let's go. So what I did is I took this. You can buy actually um, stencil paper. And this actually has um, a surface on it that's is sticky. 
Oh, let me get this out of your way here. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> so this is stencil, um, like plastic, and you can buy it like Hobby Lobby. And it actually comes with a little layer of adhesive, or like a strip, that if you put it down, then it stays on. But I kept it on there because I really don't need to worry about that part. And so what I will do is I will look at my photograph and see where some of this, and actually I didn't have as much up here. I left, I put the bird up higher and I didn't have as much of that up there. So I'm going to have to like maybe do parts of it, like maybe make a circle like this. I take a uh, magic eraser, which is Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And somebody asked me about if there's chemicals in there. I don't know, but I don't think so. I used to buy these also just as sponges on Amazon that didn't have anything in them. There's a certain name for these sponges, and I forgot what they were, but they come with nothing in them. But I think even the ones that, because um, you're washing it off, and so I'm thinking it's fine. And what I do is I take it, dip it into the water, and then I try to rinse, oh, I try to rinse out as much as possible. I try to get as much of it of the water out, and even to the point where I'm rubbing it into a, a paper towel. And I just, I just want it to be damp, you know, just enough so that it feels damp. And I don't want it to be wet because I don't want to go underneath. And so what I'm just going to do is just rub, just rub the, really lightly rub, loosen up the paint and then let it absorb into the, into the sponge. Now see how it's a little wet? So I'm going to take my paper or my cloth, my, my towel, and I'm just going to lighten that up. So I'm going to wet this. And you got to make sure that it's not wet, wet. You cannot have it real wet. Otherwise it'll go underneath the stencil. And that's what we don't want. We just want to rub it, rub it. And so that'll be one. So let's make it a little bit lighter. Again, it's a little bit too wet. So I'm just going to rub. And depending on what kind of paper you use, arches may be a little bit harder because you're rubbing, um, it's absorbing the paper. So if the paper absorbs too much, then it's a little bit harder to do this. And so I'm going to wipe off my stencil and try it again. This time I'm going to go like cross over it and do it on top here. Let's do this part right here though. I do like that little spat right there though. Let's do one first right here. We got to do a bunch of them. We're going to do a bunch of them. Also, maybe different sizes too would be a good thing. And so I'm just going to rub this out real quick. You're almost kind of ruining the paper too. On some papers, you may ruin it a little bit. But that's okay because you just want to make it nice and light. And there, it kind of got really wet, but that's okay. Got back to the white. There you have a circle. See how you're just kind of taking it back. Yeah, another way of doing this, and um, a lot of people are doing this, is if you're using white paint with a stencil and um, airbrush it on. I've seen people do that. And maybe I can even do... See, it's nice to have the hard edges a little bit because it kind of makes it look kind of neat. So this one I'm going to do not quite as hard. And so what I'm going to do is just... There we go. Another one. Position them kind of nicely. You know, it's like don't make it a pattern. You don't want a pattern. You just want it to be random. No patterns. You know, if you're going to do also no even number amount of these little things. All odd number shapes. And another one right here. See how easy that is? Boom, 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 you're done, right? Over here, they're gonna be a little bit darker because there's more pigment here. So, I mean, you can rub more, and, but I don't want them as light as on the other side because it is a dark area. And what how did I how to make this? I just put a, I put a little can on there and then I um, cut it out, cut it out with this knife. And then having the towel on the table is always good. You know, always use a towel. Get your towels at Goodwill and then just be able to um, just draw right on top of your right on top of your desk. Oh, what do I do here now? Is that gonna work? And that's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do a real bright one right here. This one's gonna be kind of a little bit lighter. I'm gonna rub a little bit harder. And you can also put in. Let's say I wanted a darker one over here. Um, let me get a dark shape. But it's supposed to be, it's, it is supposed to be the light behind it. And so I'm going to use part of this 
I'm gonna use part of this white part right here, and I'm just gonna make see if I can make this lighter. There we go. So see, made that a little bit lighter. How many more? How many more minutes we got? <laughs> we just keep on doing this <laughs> the whole time. Let's do one down here. Let's do one down here. This is actually, I always love doing this part because it, it makes the painting look so cool. And it takes, what, like two seconds to do that, to rub it out. Look at how easy it is to rub out. I'm going to dab it a little bit. I wonder if you just rub like a little small round. Let's just try this. Let's try a little small one. Ah, look at that. Even a small round one. I just took my thing and made a round circle. Let's do this again. Let's see if we can just do a round circle. So I have fun with it. And if you ask, if you've never used a um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, you know, any grocery store has them. You know, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. I'm sure you've seen them. They even got wipes now. Um, you're going to use them as wipes. I think that's going to be it for my little circles. I think that's enough. And I don't have the other painting here. I left it there because I had to leave the class early. But I, like I said, I do have the um, image on here. And so I'll show you that in a second again. Let me put this over here. Anything? Oh, we're going to put a little bit of the, I'm going to take a little bit of the light blue and kind of place it underneath here and tint it a little bit to make it a little bit darker underneath the eye. We don't want it so vibrant. Like even in his eye, I want it a little bit darker. A little tint underneath there. And again, I can go crazy with the, to, to the feathers where I can do every little feather. And that's again up to you. I will put a little bit of blue underneath his mouth here so it doesn't look so vibrant. And I'm going to kind of soften his nostril and make it round again. Let's make his nostril round. I think you'd like to have his nostril round. Any questions? Hello, David running late. Oh, hey, Barbie. Uh, I like the way your background is drawing. It already looks modeled like the photo. Yeah. Well, now how you like it now with the little round circles? <laughs> Let's see. Not bad. Not bad. I think... Um, Again, the stencil look different, but this is more like what the photograph is. And again, remember about the lost edges. Please start doing some lost edges. I'm going to go in here. Lose some edges. Let some edges be lost. Not everything has to be perfectly pictured as uh, tight, tight, tight. And if you want to use green like in the photo and, and use the bright blue as a photo, yes, be my guest. It's not going to be a bad thing. It's okay. I just, I already done that in this afternoon. And let me just show you that real quick, and then we will be done, guys. Another Thursday. And so next week, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do some, we're gonna do something that, um, <laughs> uh, should I tell you now? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's going to be, we are going to get over our green addiction, <laughs> that we don't like green. I just saw um, an artist's work, uh, hold on one second here. I just saw an artist's work that, um, where she used a lot of green, and I actually liked her green. And so I'm going to try to see if I can somehow figure out how she used her green and um, how she made it so neat. And so um, so there's this afternoons and here's this, this evenings. And so I like this evenings better than that one this afternoon, but only because, again, it's not as vibrant the colors, even though I know that's the color of the bird. And actually, this could actually be a little bit brighter green in here on the top of this thing. And I could just put opaques in there. So I'm going to keep it at that. And um, also somebody asked me to do a, a um, newsletter about where you sign your name. And that's a good idea too, because um, I haven't done that in a while. And so we'll talk about that too, coming up in the next couple of weeks. But next week we're gonna be, we're, we're gonna be working and we're gonna learn how to light greens. Um, I'm just gonna try to learn how to light greens and we're gonna do probably a landscape or something that has a lot of green in it. <laughs> so we are going to learn to light greens, all right? So Lynn says green is awesome. Okay, lots of variations. Yes, we will learn how to use greens next week. And so until then, we will see you next week. And have fun painting this bird. And please post and tell your other friends about it. And have them subscribe to our channel here, all right? Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Where is this? <laughs> see you next week. Bye-bye.